Hi everyone, John Davenport here from Fogarabli.com with another Let's Edit video. I know it's been a couple of weeks since the last one. I'm going to, again, try to be on a weekly basis, but no promises there. Uh, what we're going to do this week is actually work with a very cool plugin that allows you to basically do an entire HDR with different brackets all in Lightroom. Uh, the only catch is that you need to download and install a plugin for Lightroom. Um, it's from the people that make Photomatix Pro, which is a pretty highly regarded HDR program. Um, but you can go to hdrsoft.com, click on their download page, you scroll all the way to the bottom, and you want to download this Merge to 32-bit HDR plugin. It works with Lightroom 4 or 5, and basically what it does is it takes the tone mapping process out of the HDR uh, workflow, which which is pretty nice. Uh, if you're not really doing too much HDR, but you do want the flexibility of having different brackets, um, it's well worth the $29 um, license cost. And basically this trial works. You can It's a full feature, fully functional, it never expires. The only catch is that it adds a watermark to the final image. Um, once you install the license that watermark goes away uh, so you can download it and follow along with this video uh, or you can uh, buy it for $29 and, and you can do all your HDR uh, right in Lightroom so anyway as I said it, it is a very simplified version and I'm gonna be working on uh, this is one of the brackets of the series that I'm gonna be working on and as you can see there's a few other ones here I have a total of six shots what I'm going to do is right click, go down to export, and then once you have the plugin installed, it'll come over here and make a new little uh, area here for HDR soft plugins and merge to 32 bit HDR. So then, once you click on that, this dialog box appears and it tells you that I've selected six photos to merge and save as a floating point uh, TIFF file in 32 bits per channel. Um, and then you get a whole bunch of options here. You can align your image, you can crop the results. Um, you can align, so you align images by uh, correcting horizontal and vertical shifts or by matching features. Um, you know, you can play around with each one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just keep it defaulted to the by correcting horizontal and vertical shifts. Um, you can click on remove ghosts. They have normal and high. I'm gonna keep it at normal and you can reduce noise if you want. I'm going to keep it on the underexposed images only. Um, you can also choose normal and underexposed or all source images. And then you can um, basically change your file name, add a suffix, and do all sorts of other things like stack the file with uh, other photos in Lightroom, uh, use half floating point format, and scale pixel values to fix pixel range. Um, I'll just keep it as it is for now and I'll play around with it later. Again, I haven't really played around with this much myself. I've just uh, recently downloaded and purchased it. Uh, it is kind of fun to um, see this and it does definitely change the HDR workflow quite a bit. As you can see right now, it's exporting the photos uh, from Lightroom to this basically a background process and it transfers all those images, does the tone mapping for you, aligns, denoises, merges to an HDR, and then when it's done, it brings that TIFF file back into Lightroom for you, and you have all the power of Lightroom available to you with uh, basically a massive uh, TIFF file for you to um, play around with, which is uh, quite nice, actually. So we'll give it a couple more seconds here. Uh, it does take a little bit of time to do all of this. It depends on your computer's speed and uh, processing power and how much other stuff you have going on. Um, right now since I'm recording a video it's probably taking a little bit longer than it would otherwise. But as you can see here it pops up, places it in Lightroom, and you know it is different. So this is the TIFF file and then if I click over here this was the first underexposed second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And this one is somewhere in the middle, but it's not exact to any of them because it kind of averages all of them together. Again, it's just this very very rough tone mapping. Um, if you do have Photomatix, obviously you'll have a lot more control 
over what gets tone mapped and how things work out but this does a pretty good job and then you have a lot of control in Lightroom to kind of fix things um, so what I'm going to do now is just kind of go about the process of processing this TIFF file in Lightroom and it's not all that much different than processing a normal RAW file except that you do have you know a little more information to pull from so you know I'm gonna raise my shadows I'm gonna lower my highlights um, pretty standard stuff uh, I think I'm gonna keep my exposure about where it is maybe just up a little bit add a little bit of contrast here um, play with my white slider uh, my black slider add a little bit more contrast in that manner maybe just a little bit of clarity I want to go with kind of a vibrant look here really accentuate that sunset um, you know what, I liked the white balance where it was. Um, so this is pretty good. And you know what, um, I think the next thing I'm going to do, I think the one thing that I want to do is try and bring a little more light into this foreground here. So I'm going to come in here with an adjustment brush, and I'm just going to paint in a little bit there, maybe raise the shadows up a little bit, something like this. And then I'm just going to paint in along basically the whole foreground here and just try and really uh, get the shadows to kind of pop up. And so if you have your auto max mask settings set on your adjustment brush, you can do things like uh, paint in pretty close to different areas, like how I just painted over these trees. And Lightroom's pretty good about knowing uh, what you wanted to do to touch and what you didn't want to touch. Uh, it's not perfect. It does help that I'm doing shadows and not exposure. If, if you were doing exposure, you'd affect more of the mid-tones, which um, does tend to affect more of the highlight regions of the sky and stuff. But um, because there aren't many shadow tones in these skies, it's, it's really easy to paint over the trees and really get them to kind of pop uh, without affecting the background there. I'm also going to actually add another adjustment brush and this one I am going to reduce the highlights just just a little bit um, set the exposure back so this is just going to help bring in a little bit more warmth and more color to to the sky here um, not too drastic but just enough to kind of really separate everything and then finally I'm going to come down here to my um, actually, you know what, let's do the lens correction tab first. I'm going to do uh, profile cor corrections. I'm going to remove chromatic aberrations. And uh, I don't think I need to do any alignment. It looks like it's pretty level. And then I'm going to come in here. Let's zoom in on these trees here. Um, so you can see there's quite a bit of detail in this photo. I'm going to go to my sharpening tab, add just a little bit more sharpness. And... Um, then maybe just kind of something like this. So you can see this is quite a bit of uh, detail and there's quite a lot going on here. Um, so I hope you learned something. Um, I don't know if you've used this plugin or not, but I would be interested in hearing uh, what you what you think of it and uh, I'll be glad to do more of these types of let's edits in the future now that I have this plugin as well. Uh, so thank you for watching, have a great week and I will see you again hopefully next week but it has been a little busy around here so it might be a couple of weeks again. Bye for now.